You are watching Econom TV, the unofficial broadcaster of economics for South African students. In this episode, we are still in Chapter 7, looking at demand, supply and prices. This is Part 2 of 4, and we'll have a closer look at individual demand and also market demand. In the previous section, we looked at the relationship between the price of the product and the quantity demanded and drew an individual demand curve from a demand schedule. Now in this section, we'll be having a closer look at the other determinants of individual demand. This includes the price of related products, income, tastes and preferences and the size of households. Then we'll move on to market demand. Now the key concept to note here is the idea of a movement of the whole demand curve. The above determinants of demand causes a change of the whole curve. We showed in the previous section that a change in the price results in a change in the quantity demanded and that is a movement along the curve. Now if there are changes in these determinants of demand it leads to a change of the whole curve. If demand increases the demand curve moves to the right. If demand decreases, the demand curve moves to the left. And we'll be looking at examples of each of these in the slides that follow. So in the first example, what happens to the demand for a product when the price of a substitute changes? In our case, we'll be looking at the example of butter and margarine. Let's say that there's some initial price and quantity demanded combination for butter. Now, there's an increase in the price of butter. So the price increases, it goes up. And the quantity demanded will decrease. This is a movement along the demand curve. But what happens to the demand for margarine? If people are using a smaller quantity of butter, it means that they still have to put something on their bread. So the demand for margarine increases. The whole demand curve moves to the right. In fact, more margarine is demanded at every price. So for the expensive brands, more is demanded and also for the cheaper brands, a greater quantity is demanded. So, a so an increase, increase in, in the price, price of a substitute, substitute sorry, an increase to an increase in the demand for the product that you are examining. The alternative is to look what happens to demand when there is a change in the price of a complement in consumption. In this example, we're looking at tennis balls and tennis rackets. Let's say that there is some initial price and quantity demanded combination for tennis rackets. For some reason, an improvement in technology or in the production process, the price of tennis rackets fall. The result is that as the price decreases, the quantity demanded increases. Now, this is a movement along the demand curve. But what happens to the demand for tennis balls? If there are more people out there playing with tennis rackets, there will also be an increase in the demand for tennis balls. Now, this means that the whole demand curve moves to the right. More tennis balls are demanded at every price. Another determinant of demand is consumers' incomes. So what happens to demand when consumers' incomes increase? In our example, we can say what happens to the demand for LED TVs if people have more income. Now, if this is a normal product, an increase in income will lead to an increase in demand. So that's easy to understand. People have more money and the result is that they throw away their old TVs and there's an increase in the demand for LED TVs. Now this only holds true for normal products. We can also talk about inferior products. These are products that you do not buy more of when your income increases. So if for some reason you get more income, you don't go and buy more bread. You rather switch to other types of food. And bread can be classified as an inferior product in this context. Generally, Generally speaking, speaking, when there's, there's an increase, increase in income, income it means it that there's an increase, increase, in, increase in, dem in demand. A decrease in income leads to a decrease in demand. Other factors that can cause a change in demand includes a change in the population. So, for example, if the population shrinks due to immigration, that 
reduces the demand for food. If you expect prices to increase sharply in the future, that will lead to an increase in the demand now. If there's a change in the income distribution, for example, if it becomes more equal, that means more people have more income and the end result is an increase in demand. The determinants of demand can also be expressed in symbols. The quantity demanded is a function of the price of the product, the price of related goods and services, income, tastes and preferences, and the size of the households. Often we are interested in describing more than just the individual's demand for a product, but looking at the market demand. This is the quantity of a product or service demanded by all the consumers in the market. In our example, that is the demand for tomatoes from Anne, Heide and Pietru. How do we derive the market demand? It's easy. We start with a market demand schedule. The market demand is simply the sum of the individual quantities demanded by the different consumers. At a price of 1 Rand, Anne demands a quantity of 6. You can add to that the 4 demanded by Heide and then plus the 5 demanded by Pietru and this adds up to a total of 15. Deriving the market demand is simply a summation of the individual quantities demanded at each of the prices. This is also true if you were presented with the individual demand curves and have to derive the market demand curve. Say for example, at a price of 2, the individual quantity demanded is 3, plus 4, plus 5, and this adds up to the total of 12. So, a horizontal summation of the individual demand curves yield the market demand curve. So, did we achieve the outcomes of this section? Can you discuss the determinants of demand? Can you draw demand curves and explain changes in demand? Can you describe and draw the market demand curve? For more information, also look at Chapter 7 in Moren Furi. There are additional resources available on your fundi and you can answer the quiz questions. Finally, follow at Yekonoom on Twitter.